Welcome to Beer and Politics. We are your disappointing hosts, Ryan and Ryan. Before we begin today, we want to give a shout out to Eastman DC who put together that brand new intro for us. Yeah, we uh, gave him some footage, came up with an awesome intro. Love it and we appreciate it. Thanks very much. That's right. Cheers. So today, we got a happy hour special. If you're not familiar with our program, a happy hour special is something where we have researched a bit less, but we think that the topic is important enough to discuss. Uh, today's topic du jour, that's the topic of the day. Sounds nice. I'll have that. Delicious. Uh, is the controversy surrounding the removal of Confederate monuments from public places in the South. Those who want to remove them seem as homages to racism and slavery. Those who want to keep them look at them as historical artifacts. And the first question we should answer today is, why do we even have statues or monuments? So we have statues, we have monuments for the purpose of remembering someone. And not just that they existed, but to remember something special about them. Something they did, something that was honorable, or perhaps a specific moment in history. So to give some examples, I've got a few statues I'm going to talk about briefly. Uh, number one, the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's there with a big statue of Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. It's pretty awesome if you haven't seen it. And it says that it's there to remember the man who saved the Union. So it's something very specific. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, another one, Thomas Jefferson. The Jefferson Memorial also in Washington, D.C. It is there to remember the man who was the primary author of the Declaration of Independence a man whose mind and whose legacy shaped the very fabric of this nation and who had a giant role in just about every part of the founding of this country. Sure. So that's something honorable to remember. It's not remembering the fact that he was a slave owner because he was a slave owner. Mm -hmm. and, had, uh, <laughs> and had children with slaves. Yep, not mm -hmm. remembering that, not no. honoring mm -mm. that. Mm -mm. Um, one other one that I'm gonna talk about is kind of a little closer to the current subject. It's the Stonewall Jackson Shrine in Carolyn County, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Now, Stonewall Jackson, if you don't know, was a Confederate general who served under Robert E. Lee. And the shrine is actually the building in which he died. He was mm. wounded in battle. He was shot in the arm by friendly fire. They amputated his arm, and about seven days later, he died in this building. It was a plantation at the time. And since then, all of the buildings have either fallen to time or been taken down. And this is the only one that's left. And it's actually a national park at this point. And mm -hmm. it's, it's to remember this moment in history and this moment in time, something that was very consequential for a very important person in history. Right. So whether or not you agree mm. with his stance or the Civil War or anything like that, we are remembering an important player at an important time in an important place. Yes. Right. So that leads us to, okay, well, we understand what statues and monuments are about. What about these statues and these monuments? Mm. If they're there to honor people for their honorable attributes, right? We don't honor dishonorable attributes. We don't put up statues to honor the things that we're disappointed in people with, right, or for, <laughs> right? So, so if they're there, what are the honorable attributes that we're looking at? And... So first place you start with, well, what exactly are these statues? Right? Mm. They are, by definition, Confederate monuments. We can tell they're Confederate monuments because they are military personnel wearing their Confederate uniforms. This represents the South, the mm -hmm. protector and defender of slavery. And if you don't see that as honoring the protectors and defenders of slavery, what is it that we think they are honoring? So I've heard a lot of people say, that the Civil War, it's more than just slavery. That was sort of an ancillary thing. There were other things at play. Hmm. Um, it was about states' rights. It was about economic rights. It was about property rights. These are the big three that I hear. There may be others, but, but it's important to understand that when they're talking about property rights, they weren't actually talking about neighborly disputes and where we should draw a property line or... Hmm. Um, if, I've, if I've lent you a plow, mm -hmm. what, what the rules are about you giving it back to me. Right. No, the property rights are when your people property, when your slaves run away to the northern states, mm -hmm. if the north is required to return them. And under the Constitution, 
they were. Mm. Uh, and the South was upset that the North wasn't because they were violating these constitutionally mandated property rights. Because remember, slaves were property. Mm -hmm. Secondly, economic rights. People said, it's about the economy. It's the economy, stupid. <laughs> and yeah, it was the economy. And the bedrock of the Southern economy was slavery, mm -hmm. bar none. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was about the economy. Slavery was ancillary, but that's because they didn't think of it as slavery. They thought about it as their economy. Right. They thought about it as their property. Yep. And lastly, we're gonna to come to states' rights. What states' rights are we concerned with? Mm -hmm. And one would be whether they or not they had the right to secede. And we decided they don't. They lost the war. Sure. <laughs> and, and the other one is slavery. Because I'd like you to think about something. What is the, what is the only right mm -hmm. that was removed from the southern states after the war was lost? Were other rights taken away? Anything other than the mm -hmm. right and the ability to own another human. Can you think of any? The, the right to freedom of speech. Ha! Nope. Oh. Uh, Although college kids are going to try to take that away from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't think of anything. No, neither can I. And I bet you can't either because, because you can't. So, when we, <laughs> so once we get through that complicated nature of things for some people here, <laughs> mm -hmm. you just ask them, well, what is it you see? when you see these statues, what are the honorable things to you? And, and this is a fair question because a lot of people, especially from if you're from the South, you, you learn that these people are honorable. So just ask the very specific question, what is it that you see when you look at these statues? And what they're gonna tell you is, uh, we see great military leaders. They were in fact great military leaders. Yes. Okay, military minds, military strategists, great leaders of men. Yes. Uh, people who were committed to their duty in defending their states, to defending their neighbors, their friends, their family, protecting the South. They represented the South, they represented Southern people, and that's really important because Southern people are proud to be from the South. Yeah. They think of themselves as special, as unique, and frankly, they are. And when they see these people, they see people who are representing that way of life. And what they are deliberately ignoring is the fact that they're only defending the white Southern way of life. They weren't defending the black people. They didn't ask them whether or not they wanted to secede. Their commitment to their state was a commitment to the white part of their state. Their, the consequence, whether or not they supported slavery or otherwise, would have been continued enslavement of a more than four million black people. And for context, at the start of the Civil War, the entire population of the South was only around nine million people. Right, this was about slavery, this was about race, and it was about people being protective and committed to the white people of the South. And I hear people talk about Robert E. Lee specifically, because he's the monument that was taken down most recently, <clears throat> mm -hmm. saying that, yes, he was a complicated man. Mm -hmm. He didn't support slavery. Mm -hmm. He was not a racist man. Okay. And there are some stories that they use to talk about this. Now, the story, um, it goes back to him. This is actually after the Civil War. Okay. And he has been defeated. He's been stripped of his U.S. citizenship. He actually never regained his U.S. citizenship. Mm. And he was at church in Richmond, Virginia, at I believe it was St. Peter's. Okay. Um, and he was there for a service in the South. And a black man walked in. And he walked up to the front and he knelt at the altar for communion. Mm -hmm. And no one knew what to do. But Robert E. Lee stood up, he walked to the front, and he knelt next to this black man and he took communion. And as a great leader of men, everyone else stood up and followed suit. Mm. And that's, it's a pretty great story. Sure, absolutely. And, and I think actually a statue of that would be a pretty great thing because that's kind of an honorable trait, you know, sure. leading men to something that's good, that's yeah. honorable. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what these statues are. No. And I want to go back a little bit. Yes, he was a complex man. Of course he was a complex man. He's a human being that's not a sociopath. Right. He's, of course, complex, yeah. as are we all. Sure. Um, but but let's also be serious. Of of course he was racist, and mm. he, he, hear me hear me out a little. I think in our lifetime, in 
certainly our parents' generation, certainly mm -hmm. our parents' lifetimes, we saw a lot of very different phases of racism from the 60s and where it was so bad that we decided as a nation it was disgusting and things needed to change. We saw you know, the Nazis in my grandparents' generation perhaps. Mm -hmm. And this face of racism where people are willing and people are so full of hate to drag other people out in the streets and lynch them or mm -hmm. murder them. Mm -hmm. And if that's the bar that you're using for racism, that's a really, really low bar. I don't want to drag people out and murder them. I'm not a racist. Whoa! <laughs> that, that's not what racism is. Race, right. Well, of course, I mean, yes, it is. I that's mean, certainly, an, certainly a part of racism. Yes. Uh -huh. That's symptomatic. It is. But, but racism, at its definition, is believing that one race is superior to another. Mm -hmm. And if for a moment you think that Stonewall mm -hmm. or Robert E. Lee mm -hmm. didn't believe that black people were less than they were. Now, I do believe that he held no animosity sure. and that he held no ill will, but I bet you he didn't hold ill will towards plows or towards cattle either. <laughs> uh -huh. And that doesn't, I mean, that, that doesn't make him not a racist. Right. And, yeah. and, if, and if you're still not with me, think about this. Do you think he would have fought for the right of black people to own white people? Because mm. mm -hmm. if you don't, he was definitely a racist. And he didn't, he didn't actually own slaves. Uh, I am, I'm not sure about all the legalese surrounding sure. it. Um, he, he didn't own slaves, but he was the executor to his father-in-law's estate, which owned a ton of slaves. Sure. Or a bunch, or some, or a lot. They owned slaves. So that meant he could release them if he, or free them if he so he desired. And his, uh, his father-in-law, mm -hmm. George Washington Park Custis, uh, upon his death in, I believe it was 1857, Okay said, I want you to free my slaves if it's financially feasible, or worst case scenario, five years on, free them. Mm -hmm. And upon his death, Robert E. Lee looked and decided that slave labor was necessary to increase his family's financial standings. Mm -hmm. So he kept the slaves, he kept working the slaves. He actually rented slaves out to other people for a period of five years until he eventually honored his father-in-law's wishes and did free them. So, no, he didn't own slaves, but he certainly knew that slavery and slave labor was a benefit to his family's financial success. And granted, I mean, to be fair, I want to put this in some historical context, every, everybody was racist. It's not sure. like, like, certainly everyone in the South, but it's not like the North, they were maybe slightly less racist because they're like, oh, no, you shouldn't be able to own a person. Yeah. Doesn't mean we should treat them right. Right. Like, no, the, yep. the, North, the North agreed to the three-fifths compromise, which is essentially saying that black people are three-fifths of a person. That's pretty racist. Mm. So, yes, I mean, he might have been slightly better than other people at the time because he didn't have outward animosity, but he was clearly a racist. Yeah. So, you know, that leaves us with this idea then of, well, maybe we're tearing down history. Mm -hmm. Right, and usually when people say that, they follow it up with the cliche of, if you forget history, you're doomed to repeat it. Doomed. And so <laughs> the question is, if you look at these statues as honorable things, what exactly is it you think we're doomed to repeat? To having great uh, Southern heroes, great military leaders who yeah. graduate from uh -huh. West Point? <laughs> That's right, if we rip them down, we will never remember great military <laughs> heroes that, saw on, that fought on the wrong side mm. of history. No, when we talk about being doomed, we're talking about if we don't remember the bad things, we are doomed to repeat the bad things. And the problem is we don't look at the statues as a bad things. We don't look at that statue of Robert E. Lee and say, there is a great military hero. Look how far he fell and how much shame he brought upon himself. We don't do that. No, we just say, look at that great military hero. Especially because the statues are beautiful. They are. They, they are wonderful works of art. They are mighty. They are powerful. We don't look at them and say, shame. 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 No, they are proud. That's right. They are proud. If we looked at them and said shame, I would say, maybe we should leave them. Just so we know how far even the greatest human being can fall. And how wrong they can be. But we don't do that. No. And then maybe... Maybe your argument is we should keep them so we can remember just how racist America was shortly after the Civil War. And I say America because I don't mean the South. To your point, to the three-fifths compromise, I mean the South 
and the North. When they were dedicating that statue to Robert E. Lee in New Orleans, Northern soldiers came down to pay tribute to Robert E. Lee at that dedication. And if you said, we want to keep this so we can remember just how racist we were during the Jim Crow times <laughs> of the South, that we didn't ask black people how they might feel about us honoring a man <laughs> who fought to enslave them, then maybe you have a point. Maybe mm. we should remember just how far we've come and how far we had to go. But that's never your point. Your point is, look how great these people were and how complex they were. And we just want to remember the complexities of these people. No, we're doomed to repeat having people fall and do historically racist and gross and disgusting things such as enslaving another person. And that's the part we want to forget. People talk about as whitewashing things now. No, no, no. That was whitewashing back then. <laughs> yes. We were putting them up so we can make believe this didn't really happen. It was, hey, good job, guys. We really, we fought that out. That, yeah. Yeah, nothing to do with slavery. And nothing to do <laughs> with slavery. No, this isn't our past. We're not erasing our past. We are erasing, what is it you say? I say it's, it's the misconception of our current history. Yes. We are, by ripping these down, we are erasing our misconception of current history, which is that these statues are okay and they don't represent awful things because we don't tell each other these are awful statues representing awful things. And people are, I've been accused of kind of uh, badgering against Robert E. Lee's memory, mm. or Stonewall Jackson, or um, Jeb Stewart, or any number of, of Southern, if you will, heroes. Sure. And here's the thing, as you were saying, I, I actually don't har uh, harbor any ill will towards them. In fact, I don't think I'm better than they are, mm -hmm. all right? If I didn't know what I know today, and I was born in the South during the Civil War, in all likelihood, I would have fought for the South, because that's what people did. But the fact of the matter is, I do know what I know today. Mm -hmm. And if you try to raise a statue of me wearing my Confederate uniform, I would say, please don't do that. I take no honor in that stance. I take no honor in the actions I took. And I think if Robert E. Lee was as honorable as we say he is. And is not racist. And is not racist. Well, if he knows mm -hmm. what we know today, I think he would say, I don't want to be remembered for that act. Maybe, maybe from the Mexican War. Maybe from the Mexican War. Maybe wearing his U.S. Army outfit. Maybe taking communion with a black man. Any number of things. And we can find a better place for them. Again, they're magnificent statues. Yeah, any battlefield would be fantastic. Any battlefield, we can find a museum. We can create new statues that honor the men in ways that they deserve to be honored if we so chose to do so. Even, maybe even at West Point. Even at West Point, where great military minds come from. Maybe she would have statues for great military minds. And we can tell our children that exists because that was a great military mind. We can tell the difference, mm -hmm. and we should. Last call. Cheers. Cheers. I want to thank you all for watching. It's been another great episode of Beer and Politics. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, tell your friends. Check us out on Instagram. Instagram. We've got a Facebook page too. Mm -hmm. We'll be on iTunes shortly. We're working out some technical stuff on the backside. But we'll be up on iTunes so you can hear our beautiful dulcet tones in your car. That's right. And please remember on Instagram and Facebook, say hi to Madam Brewmaster for us. Thanks, Madam Brewmaster. Remember, it's just beer and politics.